It was harvest time in Israel, and a palpable sense of anxiety was in the air. At any moment, the wary farmers might lift their eyes to see a tidal wave of Midianite soldiers pouring down from the hills like a flash flood from a broken dam. The Bible describes the Midianites as a nation of grasshoppers. Whenever the harvest was ripe, they would descend upon Israel's fields and crops in vast numbers like a swarm of locusts, leaving nothing in their wake but destruction and desolation. The Israelites went on the defensive, hunkering down in caves, hiding in the mountains, and building protective strongholds. The nervous harvesters quickly reaped what they could and hid it away in anticipation of an imminent invasion. God had a plan to deliver Israel from the hand of Midian, and he had chosen just the man for the job. But God's choice seemed highly unlikely. Gideon was not a superhero by any stretch of the imagination. He was a victim of his society's ills, a man who had been influenced by the climate of cowardice that had crippled and enslaved the Israelites. He was such a prisoner of fear that he would hide in a wine press to thresh his small harvest of wheat. A wine press is no place to thresh wheat. But Gideon had chosen this inappropriate place because he was afraid of the Midianites. He was afraid of losing his harvest and his life, so he hid both underground. It was in this dungeon of fear that the Lord found Gideon, frustrated, trembling, and perspiring. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of fearless courage. No one would have anticipated the Lord's declaration that day. Gideon, the Lord says, you are a mighty man of fearless courage. Where others saw a coward, God saw a deliverer. You know, what's amazing to me about the story is that when God encountered Gideon, Gideon was in his most shameful condition, laughable actually. Have you ever been caught in a moment of weakness when you felt and looked absolutely ridiculous? Well, my friend, that's exactly what happened to Gideon. God caught him in his most ridiculous moment, trembling like a coward, hiding in fear. And yet in that moment, God called Gideon a mighty man of fearless courage. Aren't you glad that God doesn't see us the way that we so often see ourselves? When you look in the mirror, maybe you see somebody who's undereducated or inexperienced. We might see someone who belongs to the wrong social class, race, or gender. Maybe we see someone who's too young or too old. There are always a million excuses why God can't use us, but the truth is that God sees more in us than we see in ourselves. And all of the shortcomings that bother us so much, they just don't intimidate him at all. I'm also glad that God doesn't see us the way that other people do. You know, many times when God begins to lift us up or we begin to break out of the box that we're in, we're surprised to discover that people aren't as happy for us as we thought they would be. We thought they were going to applaud and cheer. And then we discover that often our greatest opponents are our close friends, fellow church members, even family members. In fact, it's interesting to note that the Midianites were actually the cousins of the Israelites. They were family members, if you will. And yet it, were the, it was these family members who were oppressing Israel. You know, the enemy knows how to use those closest to us to bring discouragement. They say, who do you think you are? You think you're better than us? We've known you since you were a child. We've seen all your failures. We know all your faults. You're just one of us. Get back in your place. A while back, uh, I became interested in purchasing an aquarium. And as I began to research, I was amazed to discover all the different kinds of aquariums that can be bought. There are large ones, there are small ones, there's freshwater and saltwater aquariums. There's aquariums for fish, aquariums for corals, aquariums for reptiles and invertebrates and all different things. But what really fascinated me was the aquarium for crabs. And I discovered that these particular crab aquariums had no lids on top. And I was amused when I discovered why. Apparently, when you have an aquarium for crabs, you don't need to have a cover on the top because if one of the crabs tries to climb out, the other ones will reach up and pull him back down again. And when I heard this, I thought to myself, you know, I know a lot of crabby Christians. We don't like to see someone succeed where we have failed. We don't like to see someone blessed more than we've been blessed. And if they are, then we reach up and we try to pull them back down into the miserable box that we are in ourselves. 
But the wonderful reality is that God doesn't see us the way that other people do. Let's go back to the story of Gideon for a moment. Here's Gideon in the wine press, hiding for his life, trembling, perspiring. And then the angel of the Lord appears to him and calls Gideon a mighty man of fearless courage. I think if I had been Gideon, that day I would have looked around in the wine press and said, who is God talking to? Surely God couldn't be calling me courageous. In fact, I think if you get a dictionary and you look up the word coward, there's a picture of Gideon's face right next to the word. But my friend, God saw something in Gideon that nobody else saw, not even Gideon himself. How comforting it is to know that God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Oh, my friend, when you understand what God sees when he looks at you, it will change your life.